Hello and welcome again to this series on Raj Yoga Meditation. And in this session, we will explore our relationship with this world. In the previous sessions, we have put forward two basic spiritual realities. that the real self, the inner being, is non-physical. You know, we had said there is a body and that there is a being that operates the body a being of consciousness, a soul, and this being is non-physical, this being is invisible, this being is intangible, this being is the conscious self, the one who creates thoughts, who has feelings, who is experiencing everything. And we had said that this being transcends the limitation of matter. This being is eternal. <clears throat> now, let us take a moment to more deeply reflect on these spiritual realities. Let us reflect on the implication of this. Souls are experiencers. And so there is a physical world And in this world, there is a body, there are possessions, objects, maybe a house or a, a car. <laughs> I'm not an artist, as you can see. There are relationships, family, maybe children, there are, there is a job, there is a position, maybe there is a country, there is a city, they have certain ideas. All of this is part of what is happening in this physical world and around us and more. And we have also said there is one who is experiencing all of this. The inner being, the experiencer, who is associated with the body. And this inner being or soul has come from the non-physical dimension. Non-physical world. This being enters the physical world and this moment that it gets exposure to the physical world we call birth the soul travels and at some moment in time leaves 
the physical world returns to the non-physical dimension now the soul or the real self or real I is this non-physical timeless being that transcends the limitations of what happens in the physical world as experiencers of this physical world as visitors of this physical world what would be the right attitude towards this world we have come here we associate with relationships with objects position possession with the body but we will leave again and we cannot take anything with us so in a true sense we are in trustees of all of this we are entrusted with this for a specific period of time we do not truly own anything here so the spiritual understanding is that normally in ordinary consciousness we say I to this and we say mine to the body and mine to relationships and mine to possessions and mine to position and job and my country but in reality the soul the traveler the visitor does not really own anything here we are at the most trustees we are exposed to these things associated to these things for a temporary period of time but we do not own anything now this is very useful to deeply soak in because if we do not own anything or anyone we cannot lose anything so reflecting on all of this we can come to this basic understandings that no matter what happens here the real self the soul exists whatever happens to the body whatever happens to possessions relationships the soul exists the real self is separate from the body and when this body dies I continue to exist and everyone else is also a soul and no one truly dies body dies body has a beginning and an end but the soul continues and also we do not own anything and therefore we cannot lose anything
Now this is very useful to soak in because this belief system of ownership when we are not in spiritual consciousness, when we forget the non-physical part of it, and just in physical consciousness, there is this belief in ownership. But the mental state of one who feels I own and is in that state of mine also has feelings of being insecure, maybe even anxious and distressed. Because if I own anything that is temporary, I can also lose it. And that feeling of loss or potential loss or threat of losing makes us insecure, creates some level of anxiety and distress. Now if we look at the spiritual positioning, the real self, I own nothing in this world. I experience it <clears throat> I'm a trustee of it all, but truly I do not own it. And so one cannot lose anything ever. And this generates a feeling of inner peace and a sense of security. So that peace and that sense of security that many of us are looking for and looking for many times in these things actually comes when we drop this belief system of owning things that are perishable, that are temporary in nature, realizing the self as an eternal timeless spiritual being that comes in this world to experience and express but doesn't own anything and so cannot lose anything that is the basis for a deeper sense of security and peace Now, more one feels secure, more one is free from unnecessary and petty desires. And this becomes the basis of contentment. more one is secure there comes a sense of feeling free from desires and expectations a deeper sense of freedom and this absence of desires or less desires creates a sense of contentment which also creates a feeling of peace the soul conscious soul the one who is aware of the self as the spiritual being visiting emerges within 
that original experience of eternity, of security, freedom, freedom from petty needs and desires, an experience of contentment, peace, compassion, love, a deeper sense of joy. These are the higher and refined emotions that emerge when we feel deeply secure and a security that is not based on the temporary things in the physical world. But as we go through life, as we are exposed to the physical world, the soul loses this truth about the self. And with that, we lose our original experience. this original experience that I had mentioned that comes from that sense of feeling deeply secure this peace, contentment, compassion, freedom, love it is our natural state and we know it is natural because that is what we feel comfortable with. That is what we are looking for, striving for. Although we have lost it and at this moment may not be experiencing that, this, this is what is original and this is what we feel comfortable with. And that is why we always strive to come back to this most of our thoughts and our actions are directed to regaining something of this. The moment the experience of distress comes or we come into anger or envy, we feel inner discomfort. And then we struggle to get back into peace. Each one in uh, their, in the way they think best, they try to come back into this original experience. But we should make the effort with clarity of understanding and to regain this original experience is not by accumulating more in the physical world saying mine, mine towards temporary things Regaining this original experience is by seeing the bigger picture, the total truth of who we are, understanding the bigger picture, the invisible, eternal, timeless, spiritual, godlike being that enters the physical world, travels and then leaves the physical world. Our relationship with this world is one of visiting. Our relationship with this world is one of a trustee. Our relationship with this world is of one of observing, of experiencing, but we cannot 
truly own anything here and once we see this bigger picture once we live in this awareness once we live with this perspective we can start regaining that sense of deeper security and that original experience of higher and refined emotions and that no matter what happens here we can remain in that state of peace We once experienced those higher emotions, but somehow we have lost them. And we try to get back into that experience. Because somehow we know that it is attainable. Somehow that memory stays within our subconscious. We searched in many ways, in material position, possessions, through satiation of the senses, but that gave us at the most temporarily peace and contentment. Now is the time to return to the original state, to that spiritually awake state, to that state of knowledge. This will lead us back to the original experience. Thank you. <laughs>